Hey, VC. Welcome back. <laughs> hey, VC. Welcome back. This is Hubtoons. I'm Mike. Um, just going to do a uh, contest entry for Nick Rudo. Um, great channel. Great guy. Um, he kind of actually really inspired me to get this thing going. Um, just He's got a great taste in music. He's... Um, very eclectic. He's all over the map. I thought I was like very diverse in my uh, music taste. Uh, he is all over just like I am and um, really impressive knowledge of uh, all his stuff and his collection and um, just an all-around good guy. So uh, reach out to him. Uh, put a, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, like, subscribe his channel. And uh, so he's doing a contest for uh, 420. Um, he just passed 420 subs um, in a very short period of time. He's only been doing this since uh, like the middle of January. So uh, he is off to a booming start. Um, so congratulations, Nick. And um, we're gonna do a celebration of 420 on 420. Um, he has a quick list of uh, six prompts. I'm just going to do them. I didn't write them down, so all the prompts are in my head. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, the first one he wants to show is a reggae album. Uh, this is Toots in the Mail, Maytals. Uh, this is a reissue from a couple of years ago. Uh, on funky green, red, and yellow. Uh, this. This is Pressure Drop. Um, one side is um, Pressure Drop, and then the second side is uh, just different versions of songs from the album. Um, it's good. I'm not a not a giant reggae fan. I, I listened to more reggae when I was younger. Um, definitely Bob Marley and Jimmy Cliff were probably my two favorites. I don't listen to it as much as I used to. Um, I don't know, my love of reggae was kind of ruined by a uh, trip to Jamaica. And, uh, you know, the Sandals Resort had their basic wedding band reggae group that played by the pool every single day. And they played every song over and over and over again. So they kind of, <laughs> they weren't very good. <laughs> so ever since then, I don't know, reggae has not, not really been... Uh, high on my list of stuff I spin. But this is a terrific fun album. Uh, this is Toots and the Maytals, Pressure Drop. Uh, next up was a stoner band. Show a stoner band. I don't know what a stoner band is. I have an idea, and I don't think I... I don't know, I don't know. When I hear stoner band, I mean, because of I'm 53, um, maybe I think of different groups than maybe someone who is hear a stoner band who is like in their 30s um so i'm just going with what i thought um this is deep purple live in japan um a rumor has it people smoke pot and listen to this album so i've been told um great album terrific live album uh if you're not into deep purple and you want to start somewhere, I suggest Live in Japan. I, I, honestly, this is really the only Deep Purple album you need. In Rock is okay, I guess, but I, this is it for me. This is all you need. This is one hell of a live album, too. Um, what a terrific live band they were. Um, unreal. Um, uh, and, of course, I don't have my glasses. But, um, yeah, this is this is spectacular. Um, Highway Star, Child of the Time, Strange Kind of Woman, um, Smoke on the Water, Space Truckin'. Space Truckin's all the entire side four. So, yeah. If you're gonna grab a Deep Purple album, just grab this. This is a very representative of exactly the powers of this band. John, John Lord and Richie Blackmore and Ian Gilliam and Unreal. Fantastic live album for Stoner Rock. 
the next one was uh, show a trippy cover. Show an album with a trippy cover. I'm going with this. This is the Dream Syndicate. It is uh, the Universe Inside. This was this just came out last year, uh, 2020. It's one of my favorite albums of 2020. It's very um, very psych, very kind of jammy. Um, great album. Really cool stuff. And super trippy. Um, if you guys haven't heard this album, it, it, check it out. It's uh, the Dream Syndicate from uh, 2020. This came out early in early in lockdown. There's only four songs on it, five songs on it. They're all kind of long, jammy stuff. There's a lot of vocals and stuff. It's a great album. Really, really good album. This is one of my favorite albums of 2020. So check this out, Dream Syndicate. Uh, show an album from uh, a pothead. Um, you know, I went with, I feel lame for showing this, but I went with Willie Nelson, Stardust. I kind of racked my brain on this uh, prompt because I, I wanted, I didn't want to do Willie Nelson, but it's, it's Willie. Uh, this is Stardust, the multi-platinum album. I mean, this is probably, I know for a while this was his biggest selling album. Uh, this is the one with uh, Stardust, Georgia on My Mind, Unchained Melody. Yeah, this is this is all covers. Um, a lot of them are kind of sound like demos and stuff, but um, it's a really good album. Uh, so that's Willie, Dar Willie Nelson Stardust for a pothead. Uh, next prompt was um, show an album that mellows you out. Um, I'm probably the only, I think I'm the only person <laughs> who actually likes this album. This is Tim Buckley, uh, Lorca, um, from 70, 1970, I believe. Um, this is just vintage Tim Buckley. Um, it is um, folky, dirgy, maybe dirge folk. Um, I t I don't think this album went over real big when it came out, uh, but I love it, um, especially side one. Uh, the title track is fantastic. Um, Anonymous Proposition is really cool. I love the song Driftin'. There's only one, two, three, four, five songs on it, and they're all over seven minutes long. Um, and if you're familiar with Tim Buckley, it's, it's vintage Tim Buckley, but it's very... It's mellow and it's slow and his singing is slow and it, it's it's very a little less guitar a little more keyboardy. Um, I I don't know I've always liked this album. I, it's not something I spin all the time. <laughs> you gotta kind of be in the mood for it. Uh, but yeah, Tim Buckley. Uh, this is Lor Lorca. It's a check it out. It's a strange album. You'll either hate it or you'll love it. This is my guess. <laughs> Most people, I don't think, like that album. But it mellows me out. <laughs> and that's what the question was for. Uh, the last one is show a jam band record. And, of course, I'm gonna... I, I was, I was gonna do the Allman Brothers. I was gonna show my mofi of, um, of Live at the Fillmore. And I was like, no. I, I'm gonna go with the jam band that you guys probably all knew I was gonna show. And that's The Grateful Dead. Uh, this is my copy of, uh, this is my favorite, this is probably my favorite Grateful Dead record. This is uh, Europe 72. This is the reissue from about, oh my gosh, it's probably been seven years now, six or seven years. Um, it's a fantastic reissue. It's a three, see, look how Look how that beautiful inner inner gatefold there. Pretty spectacular. Huh? The Beatles couldn't even come up with that, huh? Um, it's it's fantastic. It, it, it's they've spread it out onto three discs. Um, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it's the original album plus some extras and. They also released a volume two. 
sorry. It's heavy and awkward. It's heavy and awkward. That's a, some cool artwork. I really like that. Um, this one is four. I won't show you the plain white, uh, but this one is four discs, and this is all additional Europe 72 songs. Um, it's that whole era of uh, the Grateful Dead. So, um, yeah, I, I, this is one of my prized possessions. I absolutely love this, and it's really awkward. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, Grateful Dead Europe 72, Volumes 1 and 2. If you guys see, see these out there, I um, highly, highly recommend picking these up. I don't know what they go for nowadays. They were not cheap when I bought them, especially the uh, Volume 2 with the uh, four discs. Um, but, yeah, grab these. If you're a deadhead, find these. They're absolutely spectacular. And that's it. Quick video. Uh, congratulations, Nick, on your 420. I'm sure you're going to be blowing away 500 very soon. Um, and I'm right on your tail. I'm going to catch you. So um, have a great day, everyone. Nick, stay cool. And I will talk to you guys soon.